One of the most important things to understand about stop motion movies is understanding the camera that you have to work with. Because people don't make cameras specifically for the purpose of stop motion movies. Not generally, at least not the kinds that you can buy on a consumer level. So we kind of have to deal with cameras that are either made for video or made for still photography. And we have to sort of like converge them together to figure out what works the best for our stop motion stuff. There are many different types of cameras and each camera has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. In the realm of brick filming many cameras have been used. Just for fun I'm gonna reminisce with some of the older people in the audience where we used to use cameras like this. Ooh, This is an old Super 8 camera where you'd put the film cartridges in the back of the camera like that if you were just a kid in the neighborhood wanting to make a movie, I mean, this was your best bet. This was the cheapest thing you could get. You know, these cameras weren't too expensive. Uh, the film wasn't too expensive. They came in cartridges. And um, this is what you went around and you filmed your movie with. I believe a lot of, a lot of young filmmakers back in, the, back in the day, Steven Spielberg, they would go out and shoot movies on these kinds of things. Now, the, the difficult thing was they were expensive. You were using film. The annoying thing was you had to get your film processed so you didn't even know what it looked like until you got it back from the lab and then you were able to to look on it on a projector and that's another thing you needed a projector to just to look at it don't even and we're not even going to talk about editing it together because that requires a whole new thing it's kind of fun to look back and look at some of the old films that were made back 20 plus years ago because they would have to use film and the nice thing about working with film is it taught you to know what you were doing ahead of time. You really don't become good at what you're doing unless you know the history of whatever it is that you're doing. And with filmmakers, I would exhort that everyone should learn how to use film cameras because it teaches you about not just rushing into things, like rushing into the lighting, rushing in to the setup and just shooting it and just burning through all this, this this footage because yes technically we can get away with that but when it comes down to a professional setting you know that your producers don't want you spending forever doing just a simple two two shot you know they, they want you to know what you're doing the filmmakers back in the day they had to know what they were doing before they took the first frame of exposure so unfortunately that's not something we can all have the luxury of Unless you go to a film school where they even, and a lot of film schools now don't even work with film. So what are they, they should be just called, I don't know, video school or something like that. Digital school. One thing that inspired me to do stop motion in the first place was those old specials that you'd see on TV that were made back in like the 60s. They were like the old Rankin Bass cartoons, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and some of the Santa coming to town, and Jack Frost, and Frosty the Snowman. I always thought, well, if, if there was one thing that I could do that was different than most filmmakers is I have the ability and the know-how and the desire to do stop-motion animation, which is sort of a dying art, unfortunately. Not a lot of people do it. Now, what I have here is a 16mm Bolex camera. This is considered like the Swiss watch of cameras. It's a really nice camera. Everything about it is mechanical. Like, you can wind it up. You don't really have to have battery life. You can just go out there, and as long as you have power in your arm to crank it up, you can. You, you always can shoot with it. And the nice thing about the Bolex camera is this was the industry standard back in the 60s and so forth when they were doing television. 16 millimeter was the standard because it 35 was for, for features. It was huge. It cost way too much money to, to purchase and then process. So this kind of format was very popular and in those Rankin Bass specials, those Christmas specials, this was a similar camera to what they were using. I don't know the exact camera, but the Bolex camera has a nice feature because you can use it for stop motion. And this little cord I have attached to it is just for that reason. Because I can hook it up and I can just click this and there it goes. I just took a shot. Some of the earliest brick films that we know of were actually shot on 16mm with this very camera. The famous Magic Portal movie that came out in, I think, 1989. That was shot on a Bolex 16mm camera. 
just like this. And you can even see it in the movie where he, where you, where the Legos jump off the set and you can see the camera in it. But if you guys are like me, you know, you don't, you didn't start out with anything and all you had was whatever your parents had. As for me, my parents had this Hi8 digital camera and this is basically what I started out with shooting my first Lego movie. All of America Outlawed, my Western film, was shot with this camera. And there's a lot of reasons why I decided to go with it. Part of it at the time was, was that it worked. Another thing I recommend is just a good tripod. Uh, this kind of tripod, it's a Targus brand. I got it at a Ross store, which they sell like clothes and stuff, but they have other things. And I, I was able to get this tripod for about five bucks. Another nice thing about these cameras is they have the tripod mounts, which is obviously really nice. A lot of the computer cameras, like this, do not have that. And that's why they suck. Because, I mean, what am I going to do? Just put that on a table? So these are some tricky things you got to think about. The specifics about this camera was that it was a Sony Digital 8, but I wasn't using it for its tape. One of the main reasons why I liked it was it had the option of manual focus, where you can switch it to manual, which is really important, obviously, in stop motion. The other thing is the ability to change the focus to have manual focus and have a manual focus ring that was huge and that was really key in getting the really good looking shots that I got and then the nice the very nice thing was that it had a firewire adapter and that was key because I wanted to go through the computer and animate and having a firewire port on a camera like this is key and if you are going to go with a digital camera like this, I would suggest that it, it has to have a FireWire port. And, you and your computer ha also has to have a FireWire port. Not all computers do. Most computers out nowadays do have that. So, but you just want to watch out for that. Ah, nothing quite takes me back like this old camera does. This is the camera that I used for all of my movies back when I was in junior high and high school. It's what first kind of got me into like learning digital video and editing and it was the first camera that I used for my first brick film which has gone on to be quite successful. It was all because of this little baby right here and God willing I never have to use it again. Now the key with using that video camera is that what it does is the computer will recognize it as a video camera. And so your stop motion software, whatever it is, will usually pick it up and be able to work with it. Now when I used the Sony camera, I was able to use Stop Motion Pro and that was the, the software that I used to make my first brick film. And it will, and it will recognize that. But a lot of you guys uh, don't have a video camera or maybe don't have all of the necessary equipment to hook it up right. And what you do have is this which is basically a webcam. A lot of brick films, I would say a good majority of them, are shot on webcams. And the thing is, they work. They're nice, they're small, they're portable. You know, you can plug them into the computer, you can stretch it as long as you want. They really are a way to go. And I do recommend starting with it. When it came to my Western movie, I shot with the Sony Digital 8 camera. But it became very clear that I wasn't going to be able to use that because I was going to be on ships, I was going to be on the sea, I was going to be in taverns, it just, it just wasn't going to work out. And the exposure stopped working on the camera, so the age of the camera started getting in my way. So I went out and I bought this little thing. This is a little digital USB camera that goes on a laptop. Now, it had a lot of features that I liked, but I had to change it a little bit. And these are some tricks that you can try out. I had no way of mounting the camera. So I did what I called Legoizing the camera. So what I did was I super glued a little Lego piece on it like this, where then I could then attach it 
using another piece which then I could attach to any sort of set or anything that I needed to. This came in handy when I needed to take the camera in on close-ups um, during shots like on the deck of a ship. Now originally because I didn't know I was using this camera I was thinking about how in the world am I gonna get that big bulky Sony camera into a ship naturally and I even thought about destroying the ship and building it in pieces but luckily with this with this way of working I was able to just put the camera right into the ship and when you look at pictures of the ship uh, you can see that you really can't even see the camera and the camera is just so tiny but that's the way to work it another thing that I did was the ability to manually change the focus on the camera and what I did here was I cut out some plastic things and I super glued them to the side and you can see them sticking out right here and that was able to let me go in there and grip the the focus ring and turn it without mate without having to go in here and and chance at bumping the camera too aggressively I could just go in here and just barely turn it and by doing that the stop motion wouldn't have it when you would watch the stop motion playback you wouldn't notice a difference and so that's another thing you can do is don't worry about destroying things. If you went out and bought it and you need to use it for your project, do whatever it takes to just make it work and make it work as smooth as possible. Now the nice thing about these webcams is you can download any of the free or cheap uh, stop motion programs like I believe Anasazi is one, Stop Motion Animator, um, Monkey Jam, some of those things and these will automatically work. So the nice thing is once you get this little guy working and you you just have to download that plug it in to your little USB thing you can do it on your laptop you can do it on a desktop and you are ready to go of course we're not in a standard age now are we we're in a high definition age why not figure out how can I shoot my videos in high def what if I wanna put them on blu-ray because my dad just bought a blu-ray burner well then why don't we cover that a little bit with something like this. Ooh. Now, this right here is a digital SLR camera. And if you want to go high definition, this, my friend, is how you're going to have to do it. At least to do it right. Nice thing about digital SLRs is they are pretty cheap in comparison to a lot of things. You have complete manual controls. It has interchangeable lenses. You can put on a macro lens if you want. It has focus ring if you need it. You can shoot at the highest maximum resolution of the camera, meaning that you can go well beyond HD video. So we won't get into it right now, but I will have another episode where I will go into depth about using this camera as a stop motion camera and as a pretty pretty cheap alternative for getting something that is just amazingly beautiful a huge amount of resolution and could be transferred to 35 millimeter film if you wanted mm -hmm.